So biliary atresia is a rare disorder of the ductal system of the liver, the drainage system of bile from the liver. It's a rare disorder and it only affects about one out of every 10,000 live births. Uh, depending, a little differs a little bit by area, but depending on the area that you're in and within the entire world. Uh, it is not confined to one nationality and is, uh, and is uh, affects uh, uh, all races uh, universally. Um, we don't know the cause. For the last six decades or so, we've uh, explored this disorder, and uh, though it's been extensively studied, it's not sure if it's caused by uh, genetic predisposition of some type and then triggered by some type of exposure, either to a drug or to a virus. Babies with biliary atresia are born normal. They tend to have the good growth, intrauterine growth. They're born of normal birth weight. And what develops over the first couple of weeks of life is, is a jaundice. Now jaundice is yellowing in the eyes and in the skin. And it's very common in babies born to any, any parent. It's often a result of uh, what's called physiologic jaundice where the cells break down within the body. You know, babies are born competing for oxygen with their mothers, so they have higher hemoglobins than normal. And the hemoglobin breaks down into bilirubin and has to be removed by a liver that's not even fully developed yet. And biliary, so jaundice is not abnormal in, an, in a newborn. What biliotresia is, though, is that the drainage system, which is a tubular system from the liver, instead of being a tube, becomes a rod. And when it's a rod, it fills in with inflamed tissue and no longer drains. So these babies have jaundice that goes beyond the first week of life. Patients with suspected biliary atresia have to go through a series of uh, tests that can include blood tests, uh, ultrasound, um, radiological tests like a HIDA scan, and a liver biopsy. And final diagnosis might include an intraop cholangiogram. If that evaluation uh, reveals uh, findings that are suspicious for biliary atresia, those children are referred to our center for care. Uh, the Kasai procedure uh, involves uh, removing the abnormal parts of the bile duct uh, as they go from the liver into the small intestine. Uh, the bile flow from the liver is then rerouted into the small intestine uh, so that uh, bile can then leave the uh, body and leave the liver uh, via the small intestine. The Kasai procedure generally has three potential outcomes. Um, the first outcome is that bile drains very well, uh, that the child's jaundice clears uh, very quickly uh, and often never returns and we consider this a complete cure. Um, uh, the second outcome uh, involves uh, an, what I would consider an intermediate outcome where bile drains relatively well. It continues to drain. However, uh, due to continuing uh, inflammation in the liver, uh, the bile drainage eventually stops. Um, uh, this uh, outcome occurs in about 30 percent of patients. Uh, the third outcome is an inability for any bile to drain. Uh, and in most series, and in our series, uh, this occurs in about 20 to 30 percent of patients. Uh, these patients uh, have progressive disease uh, and unfortunately require liver transplant at an early age. When your child is not respond to Kasai procedure, meaning that child is not getting better after Kasai procedure, your doctor should consult to a liver transplant program. Um, the time to consult to the liver transplant after Kasai procedure, if the child is not doing well, uh, it could be as early as four months of age, or it could be even earlier. Nutrition is our number one goal after the procedure. So these kids actually need about 150% of calories compared to other healthy babies of their age. What we do is we try to supplement as much calories as we can. Number one, we try to concentrate their formula to more calories. If somebody gets breast milk, we try to fortify the breast milk with extra calories in order to enhance their nutrition. Uh, we we'll also use some supplementation such as medium chain triglyceride oil uh, in order to provide some extra calories for those who take formula in or even the solids. Um, sometimes, no matter how hard the parents are working, it's just not enough to get calories into their kids, even though they're trying to feed their kids all day long. And then we have to use something that's called a nasogastric tube. So it's a tiny feeding tube that goes through the nose 
and enters into the stomach of the baby. This way, when the baby is asleep, we can actually, with a pump, pump slowly some calories and formula through the nose of these babies that gets into their stomach. Usually during the day, they continue to eat by mouth, but overnight we can provide all those extra calories that they need to grow and develop. The integrated care throughout, from beginning to the long term, including into adulthood, is one of the great strengths of New York Presbyterian Hospital. Our outcomes with bilirotresia are among the best in the world. Dr. Cowles and Dr. Jean, one of our uh, colleagues who was here in the past, published a paper analyzing these results. Using the approach of what is called intent to treat, that means you take a child with a new diagnosis of biliary atresia and you follow them over a long period of time, considering the effects of all the possible treatments. And when the total survival over the long haul with healthy restoration of life to a trial with baritresia was considered, starting from the Kasai operation or going straight to transplant or doing the Kasai with the transplant later, the total survival over the long term was uh, over 90%. This is exceptionally good and a testimony to the integrated care over the long run.